Hello, everybody. So we're going to continue with chapter nine. We're working on problem solving, finding a rule. We're on page 411 of the fifth grade Go Math textbook. <clears throat> and today our, our central question that you should be able to answer at the end of this lesson is, how can you use the strategy, solve a simpler problem to help you solve a problem with patterns? So let's look at the unlock the problem. On an archaeological dig, Gabriel separates his dig site into sections with, an air, with areas of 15 square feet each. There are three archaeological members digging in every section. What is the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging at one time? <clears throat> so we know there's three members digging in every section, and we know that every section is 15 square feet. So what do we need to find? We need to find the area of Gabriel's archeological dig site. What information do we need to use? Well, we know that we can use the area of each section, which is 15 square feet. And that there are three members in each section and that there are 21 members digging. OK, so how are we going to use this information in the word problems today? We're going to use the information to search for patterns to solve a simpler problem. All right, so let's see, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> let's look at a table, okay? We can create a table. We know that there's a certain number of sections, right? In one section, there would be three members digging, and there would be 15 square feet. If there was two sections, we'd have six members digging, and there would be 30 square feet. If we had three sections, there would be nine members digging, and there would be 45 square feet, so on. So for every section, we're going to add three members. And for every section, we're going to add 15 square feet. So 90 plus 15 would be 105. So here, we would multiply the number of sections by three, right? Seven sections times three gives us 21 people, and we multiply the 21 by five. Three times five is 15, six times five is 30, nine times five is 45, so on. So if I wanted to find the number, the area in square feet, I can multiply the number of members, the total number of members, by five. So possible rules. Multiply the number of sections <clears throat> by three to find the number of members. And we can multiply the number of members by five to find the total area. So if 21 members are digging, the dig site will be 105 square feet. All right, number two. Or to try another problem on page 412. Casey is making a design with triangles and beads for a costume. In his design, each pattern unit adds three triangles and 18 beads. Casey uses 72 triangles in his design. How many beads does Casey use? So use the graphic organizer below to solve the problem. All right, what do we need to find? Well, this is the question, right? How many beads does Casey use? What information do we need to know? Well, we know that he uses three triangles. and 18 beads 
for one pattern. And that he has, he uses 72 triangles. Okay, so how will we use the information? Same as the last one, we're going to look for patterns. and solve a simpler problem. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what can we do to create a table to help us with patterns. So we know if we have one pattern, let's say one, one pattern, we know that he's going to use <clears throat> three triangles <clears throat> and the number of beads will be 18. So if we just keep that going, we know that after two patterns, he's going to have six triangles and he'll use 36 beads. Three patterns would be nine triangles, three triangles per pattern, three times three is nine. And every pattern adds an additional 18 beads. So we start to notice a pattern here. So we can multiply the patterns by three. We can multiply the triangles by six. So the number of beads is six times as much as the triangles. So if we just continued out, the number of triangles would be 72, right? And so what's 72 times six? So we figured out that there is a pattern that when we go from triangles to beads, we can multiply by six. So six times two is 12, regroup as one 10 and two ones. Six times seven tens is 42 tens, plus one more 10 is 432. Now, <clears throat> how many patterns would that be? Well, in this case, we could take the 72 and divide by three, All right? because it's the number of patterns times three. So if we continue this out, there would be 24 patterns 72 triangles, and 432 beads. What rule could you use to find an unknown number of beads if you know the related number of triangles? All you have to do is multiply the number of triangles by six. All right, so let's apply this to numbers one through six on pages 413 and 414. So Max builds rail fences. For one style of fence, each section uses three vertical fence posts and six horizontal rails. And so they're showing us a picture of that. So we have three vertical posts, and six horizontal rails. How many rails will he need for a fence that has 27 posts? Okay, so <clears throat> they're showing us two sections, three sections, so on. Okay, so we could create a table. For one section, there's gonna be three posts and six rails. 
And so that has to be for each one. So if I had two sections, I would multiply the number of posts by three to get six. And I would multiply the number of rails by six to get um, two times six to get 12 rails. So if I have two sections, I need two times six or 12 rails. If I had three sections, three times six, I'd have 18 rails and I'd have nine posts and so on. So what's the possible rule for the posts? Well, multiply sections by three. Right, nine times three, 27. Three times three, nine. Two times three, six. One times three, three. What about the rails? Well, the rails is the number of posts times two. So this one, 27 times two, will give us 54 rails. So multiply the posts by two to get the number of rails. And then use the rule to solve the problem. So 27 times two, 54. Um, <clears throat> what if another style of rail fencing has six rails between each pair of posts? How many rails are needed for 27 posts? So here we still see three posts but we are using more rails. So here we have two, four, six, two, four, six. So in this case, if we multiply the number of sections by three, we'd get the number of posts. But this time, we're gonna multiply the number of posts by four. So it's gonna be twice as many. So here we're gonna multiply the posts by four. All right, so nine times three, 27. 27 times four, 108. So we would need 108 rails. Now, I just want to make sure we do understand what these three dots mean. So usually we list like three to four terms of the sequence. So three, six, nine, we start to notice a pattern, right? And 12, 24, 36, we also notice a pattern there. So I don't need to do four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Because all I have to do is apply the, the rules to, of the pattern. So here I notice that three times three is nine, two times three is six, one times three is three. So nine times three would be 27. And then what's the pattern to go from three to 12? 6 to 24, 9 to 36, and we're multiplying by 4. So I don't need everything in between. I know that if I have 9 sections, I have to have 27 posts. And if I have 27 posts, I need to have 108 rails because there's 4 times as many rails as posts. All right, number 3. Jane works as a limousine driver. She earns $50 for every two-hour shift. How much does she does Jane or earn in one week if she works 40 hours per week? Write a rule and complete the table. So what's going on here? So one shift, two hours. Two shifts, four hours. Three shifts, six hours. So on, right? So we're multiplying the number of shifts by two. So if she works 20 shifts, that would be 40 hours. Now, what's the pattern for the number of hours worked and pay? Two times what is 50? Four times what is 100? Well, two times 25 is 50, right? And four times 25 would be 100. So this is multiplying by 25. So 40 times 25 would be a thousand. So multiply hours worked
by 25. Or multiply number of shifts by 50. All right, number four. Rosa plays games at a fair. She can buy eight games for a dollar. Each game costs two tokens. How many games can she play with 120 tokens? So every game costs two tokens. And she can buy eight game tokens for a dollar. So, all right. So, for every dollar, she gets eight tokens. So, if we take that out, one times eight is eight. And then the number of games she can play is half as many. Because it takes two tokens for every game. So, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay. So she can't pay, play eight games for the eight tokens. She can only play half as many. So if we know the number of tokens, we can divide by two. So 120 tokens divide by two. She can play 60 games. So divide. number of tokens by two. Number five, Janelle is making snacks for her classmates. There are two cups of raisins in one batch. For every two cups of raisins, she adds four cups of oats. How many cups of oats will she need if she has 10 cups of raisin? Well, all right, so one batch would be two cups of raisins. Raisins, and I'm gonna put oats here, okay? So if I have two batches, I'm gonna need four cups of raisins and eight cups of oats. Isn't that just multiplied by two? If I have number of cups of raisin, I have to multiply it by two to get the number of oats. So if I have 10 cups, or 10 batches, I'm sorry. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, if I have 10 cups of raisins, multiply that by two, I'd have 20 cups of oats. Multiply the raisins by two. So we had five batches of snacks. It would take 10 cups of raisins, five times two, two cups of raisins for every ba uh, batch, and then 10 times two to figure out the number of oats. All right, and number six, find a pattern. Uh, well, we have two squares here, then we have six, then we have 10. I'm gonna assume this is 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 squares. So what's happening? 2 to 6 plus 4. 6 to 10 plus 4. 10 to 14 plus 4. So what's the rule? Add 4. How many squares will they, there be in figure 5? Figure five is just one more figure, so we just add four more squares. 14 plus four will be 18 squares. Okay. 
right, so that's it for problem solving for this one, finding a rule. And in our final lesson of Chapter 9, we'll be talking about graphing and analyzing relationships. So until then, I will see you soon.